Protectors of the Sunna. Sunna Protectors of the Sunna. Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to our new series entitled Stories from the Quran. Stories from the Quran. And I don't think I've ever taught this uh, class, this series before. Uh, many of our new uh, converts have been asking uh, if I could teach this because uh, many of our uh, new converts, you know, they want to know uh, what the true story is about Solomon, for example. What is the true story of Cain and Abel? And, and how did um, uh, the human population begin uh, here on earth? And things like that. So, you know, I've been putting off teaching this because I didn't really want to teach it. I wanted want, uh, my brother to teach it. But my brother is so busy uh, that subhanAllah, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and teach it for you guys. Um, so this class will be held every Tuesday, inshallah, at this time, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll try to do this series. I'll try to look at the different stories that Allah mentions in the Quran and try to break them down to you guys and explain to you the meaning. And that'll help, inshallah, a lot of the new converts to get a better understanding of Islam. And before I begin, I want everyone to understand something that is very important. No Muslim should ever in their life read what they call a Bible or a Torah today. I repeat, no Muslim on this planet should ever put their hands on a book called a Bible or a book called a Torah on this at all. And what, why? Because the original Bible and the Torah do not exist. Where's my evidence? Allah says in the Quran that he destroyed the Bible and he destroyed the Torah and he replaced them with the Quran. So before Allah uh, 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 sent the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad, before the Prophet Muhammad was called to prophethood, Allah destroyed the Bible and he destroyed the Torah. Why did he do that? Because a lot of the things that were in the Bible a lot of the things that were in the Torah were punishments. A lot of things that were good and clean, Allah made unlawful to the Christians and Allah made unlawful to the Jews as punishments to them because they both kept rejecting Allah over and over and over again. That's why the other prophets did not complete their missions. But when the prophet Muhammad was called to prophethood, he completed the mission of his and all the other prophets. And that is why before Allah even sent down the first verse of the Quran, which was Iqra, before then Allah took the Bible and Torah off this planet, destroyed them. And Allah says in the Quran, whatever good was in those books, you will find them in the Quran. So I don't know what you Muslims today call yourselves reading, but you are not reading the Bible. The Bible does not exist. It has not existed for centuries, nor has the Torah existed. We have a wonderful hadith how during the prophet's time, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he came upon a Torah. And he started reading it. And he went to the prophet. He said, oh, messenger of Allah, listen to this. This is similar to what the hour, what the Allah says in the Quran. And he started reading verses from this book that the Jews have today called the Torah. And the prophet turned away from him. 
Umar continued to read. The prophet turned away and started walking away from him. Umar followed him, still reading from that book, saying, listen to this. And then finally the prophet got angry. He turned around. He said, Umar, don't you know that if Moses were here today, he would have no choice but to follow my sunnah. Don't you know, Umar, that Allah destroyed the to original Torah and he destroyed the original Bible and he put the good that was in those books in the Quran. He said, don't you know, Umar, that, that the books of today, you don't know if what you are reading is true or if it's made up by man. And don't you know, O oh Umar, to say that Allah said something that he did not say is the worst sin that anyone can do. So there's no need for you to read those books of today. You want to know what Allah said about a thing, it's in the Quran. You want to know what Allah told Moses about the children of Israel? You'll find it in the Quran. Allah mentions Moses more than anyone. You want to know what happened with Jesus? You want to know the Ten Commandments? You want to know the story of Mary? All of that is in the Quran. After that, Moses took that book, threw it down, and he's never touched a so-called Bible or Torah ever again. That hadith is authentic. You'll find it in Muslim and Bukhari and Muatta. So I don't know where this come from. Well, I do know. Uh, we've had a lot of men convert to a lot of men who were ministers and priests and, you know, and all of that convert to Islam. And they didn't know Islam, but they wanted to keep their popularity and fame as a minister or whatever they were. So they talked the Bible to you all. And that's what you guys have been doing ever since, reading the Bible. The Muslims have gone backwards. There is no Bible. You're reading a book of lies. King James was a homosexual. Google him. Study him. King James wrote that book and he was a homosexual. He was not a prophet. He was not a law. He was nothing but a homo. What are you people reading? The Prophet Muhammad never, ever, 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 ever gave dawah to the non-believers using these books of today. He gave dawah to the non-believers with the Quran. When the Muslims migrated to Abyssinia and the Abyssinian king said, tell me about Mary. The companions did not pick up a Bible and try to compare. They told what Allah said in the Quran about Mary. When the king of Abyssinia said, tell me about Jesus, they didn't go look at a Bible. They told uh, what Allah says in the Quran about Jesus. And the king, Negus, converted to Islam. He became Muslim because as the law says in the Quran, when the Quran is recited, those who have belief in their heart, they recognize the truth and they bow down to their knees and submit. That's how the prophet gave dawah to non-believers, to Christians and Jews. They recognize the truth because the Quran is the truth. Those books today that y'all read are not the Bible, not the Torah. They're made by a bunch of homosexuals, including Shakespeare. Throw that stuff away and learn the Quran and learn the Hadiths. Islam is based on only those two sources. So when you become a Muslim and you ask me to tell you about Cain, tell you about Abel, tell you about Solomon, my response is going to be the same as the companions was. I'm not going to go and read uh, 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 some book written by a Christian or a Jew. I'm going to tell you what Allah said about Cain and Abel.
and what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions said. So for this class, everything that I am teaching you is based on what Allah says in the Quran and what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has explained to us. I'm not using some book written by a homosexual kafir, okay? And I'm not reusing a book written by a, a Muslim who is basing his information on a homosexual kafir. I want y'all to understand that. And so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start this class. Today, I'm going to uh, answer the question that Sister Elizabeth and a couple of other new converts asked me about. They want to know, can you give the true story? of Cain and Abel, and how did we begin here on earth? You know, how did we marry and begin the human race here? So with that said, let's put the PowerPoint as usual. Everything I do, I use PowerPoint. And by the way, I want everyone here to remember, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, uh, Layla Nasheba, Okay, and then I highly recommend that you go to my YouTube channel and re-watch uh, my videos because everything I'm teaching is recorded. This class is being recorded right now. This is me uh, screen sharing. I am recording as we speak. Okay, so go to my YouTube channel. You'll be able to see the PowerPoint and stop and pause on your TV. Okay, so today what I'm going to do is go over the story of Cain and Abel. And for those of you who don't have my YouTube channel, here it is, youtube.com. Just type Layla Nasheba. Okay? All right, so let's get started here. Allah tells us in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, he says, Oh, Muhammad, he's talking to our prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is when the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had migrated to Medina. This is when the Muslims left Mecca. They were unable to practice Islam freely in Mecca because they were being oppressed by the Quraysh and persecuted. So that's when Allah sent down the commands telling the Muslims to leave, to move. Some of the Muslims, such as the Prophet Muhammad's daughter and her husband Uthman, they moved to Abyssinia. And then the ones that uh, uh, couldn't move to Medina. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Medina, Medina was inhabited with the Jews and the Arabs. They lived together for centuries. Okay? And uh, the Jews were happy to meet the prophet when he first got there because they wanted to see this man who they heard was coming. And they wanted to see who he was that got the Arabs to stop worshiping uh, uh, idols. So when he arrived in Medina, the Jews had a lot of questions that they asked of our prophet to see, to, to have him prove that he was truly a prophet of Allah. So they called themselves asking him questions that only a prophet of Allah would know the answer to. Well, one of the questions that the Jews asked the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about was Cain and Abel. They wanted to see if he was truly a prophet, what he had to say about the two sons of Adam, Cain and Abel. And when they ask this question, I, as I tell you, every verse of the Quran was sent down because something happened. That's why it's important for us as Muslims to learn the Hadiths because the Hadiths are the explanation of the Quran. If you read the Quran, you're not going to understand what's going on because you got to know the history, the story. So when the Jews told him, they said, oh, Abu Qasim, that was his kunya, tell us about what you know about Cain and Abel. The prophet became quiet. And this is because he was receiving the revelation from Allah. And then he spoke because Allah sent down these words saying, oh, Muhammad, Tell the Jews 
the story of the two sons of Adam, Cain and Abel, and give them the true story. Because as I told you before, the, uh, the Bible and the Torah, the original books were destroyed. Allah destroyed those books before he sent down the Quran. So uh, the books that the Jews had that had the story of Cain and Abel was not correct. Just like none of those stories in these books today are because they're written by, like I told you, homosexuals. Okay, so he said, tell the Jews the truth about Cain and Abel. How when each offered a sacrifice to Allah, it was accepted from the one, but not from the other. The latter said to the former, I will kill you. And the former said, verily, Allah only accepts from those who are righteous. If you reach out your hand to kill me, I will not reach out mine against you because I fear Allah. He is the Lord of all mankind and jinn. So Allah sent this verse down and then the prophet recited it to the Jews. And that the Jews paid attention. This is one of the proofs that they had that he was a true prophet. Also, Allah says, in the interpretation of the meaning, verily, I intend to let you draw my sin on yourself as well as, as yours. Then you will be one of the dwellers of the hellfire. This is what uh, Abel said to his brother. When, when, the, when Cain tried to kill his brother, this was his response. I'm not going to raise my hand against you. Because the Jews were confused about this. This is the problem here. The Jews wanted to know. When one of the sons of Adam attempted to kill the, this brother, did the other one fight him back? Or did he just stand there? Well, there's the story. When the first brother said, I'm going to kill you, the other one said, do it. I fear a law. I'm not going to stop you and I'm not going to fight you because I fear a law and I know that what you're getting ready to do is wrong. You know what you're getting ready to do is wrong. You going to be in hell. I ain't going to hell. That's basically what happened. And that's the question that the Jews had. Why did he not fight him back? And this is why. You know, he let his brother know, if you hurt me, I'm not going to hurt you back because you will be fuel for the hellfire. Okay? And that answered the question for the Jews. And some of them converted to Islam after the prophet gave that answer. But most of them didn't. Because that proved he was a prophet. So Allah, he was slammed. So that's the history as to why Allah told this story. The reason why Allah put the story of Cain and Abel in the Quran was because the Jews wanted to know, did, is it true? And why did the other brother not fight back? Listen to what uh, Ibn Masood and some of the other companions said. They said, Adam, alayhi salam, when he and his wife Eve were cast down here to earth, they had children. Adam used to get the male brought by one birth, married to the female by another. In other words, you know, what Adam would do is he would marry one of his sons to uh, a daughter. That's how mankind began. But Allah only allowed this to happen once. And remember, Allah can do whatever Allah wants to do. So this is the question that my new convert, Elizabeth, has. She wanted to know, is it true, Sister Layla, that mankind, when they were cast here on earth, began with incest? It wasn't incest then. Allah only allowed it to happen once to, to begin the human race. Adam and Eve 
they had two sons and then they had two daughters and they were twins what they did was marry the boy of one set of twins to the girl of the other set and that's how it was with cain and abel cain and abel were twins when eve gave birth she gave birth to cain and abel they were twins then she got pregnant and had two more children and those were girls so allah commanded adam marry one son to the twin and then the other twin girl to the other son and this is how it began but what happened was it was supposed that abel was was well it was Cain. well let me put it right let me hold on I'm, I'm confused again let me get it right eve had two sets of children cain had a sister they were twins abel had a sister they were twins and what allah did was he said marry cain's twin sister to abel's twin and then uh uh you know to abel and abel to cain's twin that's how it was i had it mixed up i'm sorry okay so that's how it was and you can see it here it was supposed to be that abel would marry cain's twin sister and Cain would marry Abel's twin sister. But Cain didn't want Abel to marry his sister because he felt his sister was prettier. It's always about a woman, guys. So that's how this all began. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to the Jews. When Eve gave birth to Cain, it was Cain and a girl born. When she gave birth to Abel, it was Abel and a girl born. Allah said, marry each sister to the opposite brother. But Abel didn't, Cain didn't want to do that. Okay? Cain didn't want to do that. So Adam ordered him to allow Abel to marry her, but Cain refused. And that's when Adam ordered both of his sons to offer a sacrifice to Allah because they were arguing. They, you know, both of them wanted the same girl to marry. So to end it, Adam said, both of you go and sac offer a sacrifice to Allah. And so as, as the boys were supposedly trying to get a sacrifice together, Adam went to Mecca to perform Hajj. Remember, we talked about uh, uh, the Kaaba. Remember, Adam was the one who uh, uh, first uh, laid, uh, first built the Kaaba. And then it deteriorated, and it was Prophet Abraham and his son Ismail who regathered the foundations together. So anyway, Adam went to make Hajj. And he told his brothers, while I'm gone, I want you two to go sacrifice to Allah. So Allah can settle this problem between the two of you. But before leaving, Adam tried to uh, get the, the earth to look out for his children. But the earth refused it. So then he asked the mountains to look out for his children. The mountains refused it. Because they didn't want this trust. What does that mean? Remember how I've taught you guys about the trust, the free will. The mountains don't have free will. The earth doesn't have free will. The sun doesn't have free will. They don't want to be held accountable. The only thing of a lost creation that accepted free will besides the jinn were humans, was man. So before Adam left, he said, oh, earth, will you look out for my sons for me while I'm gone? They said, no, nope, no, nope, we ain't held accountable for nothing here. We don't have free will. Remember, this is the earth. I rotate. I do just what Allah commands me to do. I don't think on my own. So he looked at the sun. He said, the sun, will you look out for my kids while I'm going to make Hajj? The sun said, no, I rise only when Allah commands me to rise. 
I sat with under his throne when he tells me to set. I don't have free will. I'm not held accountable for anything. So you can't trust me to look out for your children because I'm not held accountable for anything. The only two of the law's creations that's held accountable is mankind and jinn. Okay? So that's very important. So anyway, you know, Adam left. He said, well, I'm going to leave it in the hands of Allah. I'm hoping that my sons can work out this problem, and I'm going to go make Hodge. But Cain stood up after Adam left, and he said, I accept the trust. He said, I'm going to look out for my brother. I'm going to be the one in charge. And that's the state of man today. You know, we're always wanting to be the one that's superior. We always want to be the person that holds all the power. We always want to be the top dog. We want to be the best, the top. Well, that's what Cain said. When his father left, he said, look, the sun didn't want the responsibility. Neither did the earth or the mountains. I'll take it. I'm in charge. Y'all do what I say do. I'm in charge. That's the nature of man to this day. So what happened then, they both went to gather their sacrifices to offer to Allah. Abel, he offered a she-goat, a big fat she-goat, goat. whereas Cain, who made himself the leader, the one in charge, he offered just a bundle of raggedy plants to show how angry Allah was with the sacrifice that Cain offered. Allah sent a fire from the heaven that consumed and the sacrifice and, uh, 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 that was offered by Abel, and it left untouched that one of Cain. And Cain became angry. And he told his brother, I'm going to kill you. Here you are favored by a law. And not only has a law favored you, but my father favors you too. He said, I'm not going to let you marry my twin sister. I want to marry her myself. And his brother did not panic. Abel looked at Cain and he said, don't you know Cain? that Allah only accepts a sacrifice from those who are righteous. He said, it's not that Allah favored me over you. It's not that father favors me over you. He said, father is doing what Allah commanded him to do. Allah commanded him to make, have me marry your sister and you marry mine. We both were supposed to gather a sacrifice. I chose a big fat goat. You chose to go pick some dead plants. So it's not that Allah favored me over you. It's just that Allah didn't accept from you because Allah only accepts from those that are righteous. And that's how it is with us today, guys. That's why we have to make sure that whatever deeds we do in this world, we're doing them to please Allah. Because unless we're doing it out of sincerity of intentions, Allah is not going to accept. He doesn't accept our prayers if we're doing it to show off. He doesn't accept your migration if you're migrating just for a woman or a man. He doesn't accept anything unless it's done sincerely for him. And that's what uh, Abel tried to explain to his brother. He said, it's not that Allah is favoring me. It's just that he's not going to accept this. He knows that you're not sincere. He knows that you didn't want to offer to him. You went and chose some dead plants to offer to him. Okay. Listen to what Ibn, um, uh, Ibn Amir said. He said, by Allah, the murdered Abel. Abel was stronger in his faith than his brother Cain. And also, Abel was stronger than Cain physically too. But he refused to fight his brother. He refused to kill his brother because of his piety and his fear of Allah. Because again, Cain told him, 
I'm going to kill you right now. And his brother said, well, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to raise my hand to stop you. I'm not going to raise my hand to fight you back because a law, I love a law. And I want to be in good standing with him. If you hurt me or harm me, you're going to answer to a law. I trust in a law. And this is what the Prophet wasalam, told the companions and the Jews. Okay? So, here we can see two brothers. One was more God-fearing than the other. And the one that was more God-fearing was also physically stronger too. But he chose to not raise his hand up. He said, because Allah will deal with you for whatever you do to me. And when he said that, that's when his brother Cain picked up an iron rod and he struck him with it. He killed his brother instantly. He hit him so hard with that iron rod that his brother Abel fell dead at once. Now, some of the people say that, um, that the prophet said that he uh, threw a rock at him and hit him in the head. When, and then some say that he hit him when he was asleep. Okay, but Ibn Amir says, no, he heard that the prophet said that he picked up a rod and hit him one time angry when, when his brother said, Allah only accepts from those of us that are righteous. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was telling this story to the Jews and the companions were standing there listening, the Prophet went on to say, this is why whenever two Muslims get into an argument and whenever two Muslims fight each other, even if one kills the other, they are both being held. They will both be in hell because both of them had the intention to harm each other. This is all coming based on what happened with Cain and Abel. Cain told him, I'm not going to fight you back because I don't want the sin. If you choose to hurt me, it's on you. So when his brother hit him with that rod and killed him, it's on him. But had Cain fought him back, then the, both of them would have been in hell. You see that? Now y'all see how every verse of the Quran was sent down because the prophet was either telling us something or doing something. And you see that the hadiths complement the Quran. So that's why the prophet told, when he, he was explaining this story to the Jews, he looked at the companions and he said, we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in faith. Your spiritual ties are stronger than your blood ties. We don't fight each other. We don't harm each other. Our blood, our honor, our property is sacred with each other. And should two of you ever get into a fight and one kills the other, you will both be in hell because you both had the intentions that Cain had to hurt each other. Instead, you should be like Abel and not transgress the limits of Allah. So that's where that comes from. Okay? And also the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the Jews, he said, Cain committed the first murder in human history. And because of this, Cain will bear the sin of every murderer thereafter. And just as it was a shock for us guys, for, uh, for uh, Adam to come back home and find out that his son was dead, it was also a shocker for us Muslims when after the prophet Muhammad died, Uthman was brutally murdered by his own brothers in Islam. 
And we have the hadith, whereas when Saul uh, Abi Waqis heard of what happened to Uthman, he remembered when the prophet Muhammad was telling the Jews about Cain and Abel. He said, I testify that the prophet said that there will soon come a period of time in which the person who is sitting will be better than the person who stands. And the person who stands will be better than a person who walks. And when the prophet had told us that, somebody said, oh, messenger of Allah, what's your opinion if someone comes in my home and tries to kill me? The prophet said, be like the son of, Ab of Adam. Be like Abel. Don't fight your brother back. Okay, so he remembered this when Uthman was brutally murdered, you know, by the Muslims. You know, that's a, the wrong thing to do, guys, is to kill, you know, another Muslim, to kill your brother in faith. You know, and not only did Cain kill his Muslim brother, but he killed his blood brother too. Subhana Allah. A horrific thing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, after telling the Jews this story, he looked at his companions and he said, no human being is killed or murdered unjustly without a part of, of the responsibility of the crime being laid on the son of Adam because he was the one who started or invented the tradition of murder. So forever, for every murder that occurs in this world, Cain is going to have to pay for that. Just like, you know, with innovation, like the prophet said, whoever starts a good practice will get the reward for it. Whoever starts a bad practice will get the sin of it for all that follow too. Okay. So. After Cain was murdered by his brother, I mean, after Cain murdered his brother Abel, Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning that he sent a crow to scratch the ground to show him what to do with the body. And when uh, Cain saw this crow uh, scratching the earth, he began to feel bad. He said, woe unto me. I am not even as good as a crow. I don't even know how to hide the dead body of my brother like this crow does. In other words, he began to have regret. And that happens a lot. People commit murder out of anger. People commit murder out of jealousy, just like Cain. Cain was jealous. He was angry. He got mad when his brother told him, you know, uh, you know, a law don't accept from anybody that ain't sincere. And he just, bam, hit him, killed him with the rod. Now he feels ang he feels regret. He feels bad. I don't know what to do with my brother's body. I don't know what to do with it. He's laying here, bleeding, dead. So Allah had to send a bird to teach him what to do with it. Okay? So what happened when Adam came back? When Adam came back from his hodge and he found out what had happened to his son, he became very sick and he felt sorrow for his son, Abel. But he didn't have to sit there feeling bad for too long because Allah, on the same day that Cain killed his brother, Allah sent punishment to him. His foot became tied to his thigh bone and his face was as forced to, to look up at the sun as a punishment. And that's when the prophet looked at the Jews and also his companions and said, there is no sin that we can commit that brings faster punishment from a law in this world. And it will bring punishment in the hereafter other than cutting the ties of kinship or transgressing your own relative. So that's when the prophet also told the companions, the kinship is under the throne of Allah. 
because of what Cain did to his brother. We have to hold on to the tie of kinship. We have to learn to control our anger, control our jealousy, control our emotions, and not transgress like Cain did his brother. Because anyone who harms his blood brother or blood relative, Allah will not hesitate to punish you in this world and you will be punished in the hereafter. So that's the story of Cain and Abel. That's the story from the Quran. That's the story from the authentic Hadith. We don't need to read books written by people who use what homosexuals say. I just gave y'all the true story of Cain and Abel. Everything is from the Quran and the Sunnah. More proof. You ain't got to read a Bible. Bible don't exist. You need to learn those hadiths though. Because you ain't going to find all this in the Quran. You're going to find just those four verses. But the details is from the authentic hadiths that I just used. And it took me some time to go through the sitter to pull them up. But I did it. That's the story of Cain and Abel. So yes, they were supposed to marry the opposite sister twin. Okay? And Allah only allowed it that one time. After that, didn't have to marry your sister twin no more. Okay? But jealousy. Jealousy is a, a horrible, horrible, horrible sickness of the heart jealousy will cause a brother to kill his own blood okay all right so inshallah i'm gonna stop right here for today that's the story of cain and abel uh next week remember this class will be held every tuesday next tuesday inshallah i'm gonna do the story of the two angels that we just spoke about a few weeks ago harut Marut, did they really teach the people magic? I'm going to go into detail about them because those two angels are slandered so terribly. People, just like people lie on Adam and, 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 they, they, and Eve, they, they slander Harut and Marut. And Allah speaks about Harut and Marut in the Quran. So I'll do that story next week. It'll give me a week to get all my stuff together. Also, before I close out, let me remind you guys that tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you have the stories of the companions with Brother Mukhtar. Please be here for Mukhtar's class. And then Thursday, you have me telling you the life of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we're trying to add more classes here to Sunnah Follower, classes to help you to understand, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, how you should be as a Muslim. You know, we have Aqidah, we have Thiqah, we have Sirah, and this is what you need to get through that grave. All right, so I'm going to close out here. Supana kala humu wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayhi.